Hello and welcome. It's Nadine Love, here today, passionate about sharing with you how you can take your confidence up a level, two or three at least. I'm absolutely passionate about assisting you to have the opportunities, the relationships, the health, the happiness, and the joy in your life that you so deserve. And that is in order that you can create your difference and truly live the life that you're here to live fully and boldly and openly. Does that sound great? I hope so. Today we are going to focus on some realities around confidence building. And this came to my attention again, not just in this space yesterday as I was working with a client, but last night as I was mentoring, when uh, my beautiful client from Northern Territories shared with me that she knows what she needs to do when she's in a conversation talking with a prospective client. So she has a sense that she knows what she needs to do, she has a great product, great gifts to bring, and yet lets herself down because she has that niggling self-doubt. So as she walked away from a conversation with someone who was really interested in what she does, she felt apologetic, she felt as though she'd even said, oh, you know, you can talk to Mary, she'll do, um, she, she does this also. So she'd almost handed over a great opportunity to work with somebody because she felt that self-doubt creeping up. So if you can relate to being in a situation where you know that if you knew what to do or if you could lean into self-belief and confidence, then you would be able to get so much more out of your life and give so much more out of your life, which is more of the point, isn't it? So here we go. Please know that confidence building has two tracks. The one track has to do always with personal transformation. You know, the deep issues, the backstory, the background, all the influences on you that can help to construct your values and your beliefs. And that's the piece that often needs dealing with in order to assist you to be truly free. So all of those beliefs that hold you back, the self-talk, and we talk about those in other spaces. You can read more, of course, in my book, Hot Confidence, if you're into that. Uh, what I want to share with you today is something more practical or as practical and it's, this, it's the, the second track although they're equally important. So I believe that equally as important as all of the intentioning, all of the mindset and all of the clearing of your beliefs and values is definitely uh, the track that is about getting out there and doing something and getting it done. So what I want to talk to you today about is building your confidence by building your competence. And the only way to build your competence is to get out there and to do whatever it is that feels fearful because it's unfamiliar. So oftentimes when we, when we say or front up to the fact that we're scared about doing something, and by the way, it happens to all of us, maybe all of the time in any situation when you're stepping into something new, no matter how much you've done before, if it is unfamiliar, there can be a very natural sense of fear rising. So the first thing is to know that it's perfectly human, perfectly natural and normal if you feel that fear and uncertainty bubbling up to have a, 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 sense, a, a set of, of concerns and feelings that, that, that you're having. So the one thing is to know that's absolutely normal. Everybody has those. And I can remember listening to an interview about, uh, with o Oprah saying that of all the great people that she had interviewed, uh, she realized that every single person was dealing in some way at some time with feeling not good enough. So if, you're, if you ever feel those things, you are in great company. When you're stepping into a new endeavor, it does feel uncertain. Now we're going to think about competence and the fact that when we set out or start out with something new, we are in a space that we call unconscious incompetence. In other words, when we don't know what we don't know about how to do something, maybe there's that sublime space of ignorance. And then as we dip our toe in, we realize, oh my goodness, there's a lot to it. And we step into a space of conscious incompetence. And that's where the discomfort comes in. And that space of conscious incompetence is often the place where you, where you feel scared or where one can feel scared and back off. The trick is to move through that, and the only way to develop conscious competence, just like when you learn to drive a car, 
when you stepped into the car or got in the car the first time, and I don't know how old you were, I think I was 16 when I got into a car for the first time and wanted to drive. I know some people got in a lot earlier than that. So for me at 16, I got into the car and I was absolutely aware that I didn't know what I was doing. Um, that was a space of conscious incompetence. I felt very awkward. I didn't know about the clutch and accelerator. I didn't know what, what to do. I felt, um, in, in fact, in quite a lethal position and, and, and all of the feelings that go with, with not knowing how to drive. And then it wasn't long as I, as I sat with my driving instructor that I, and practiced and went out on test drives, that I, that I learned, oh hey, you know, you, you fire up the ignition and, and the whole deal with the accelerator and the brake and, you know, easing off and, and at those times it was gear changes and a gear stick and so on. And that became a, set, a conscious incompetence that soon became unconscious competence. Now that's the point where you jump in the car, and how many of you do that now? You hop in the car, hop into the driver's seat, kick it into, you know, stick on the, the clutch, stick it into, in, into gear reverse, and off you go. Do you think about it? Absolutely not. Might you be a bit more aware? Perhaps. Uh, however, you are, in fact, unconsciously competent. You don't think about it. And that is the final state to be. So you, you come to a space of conscious competence first, where you're actually thinking about what to do, about, you know, put on the clutch, change the gear, or pull up the handbrake and so on, if it's, if it's that way, or if we have a foot brake now. Okay, so there's a, a space of conscious competence, where you are aware and you're building the muscle. So this would be the moment where you step into whatever it is you need to do, in the case of my beautiful client last night, stepping into that conversation with a different mindset around, actually, you know, I am competent. Um, for her, um, she doesn't have my 2,667 hours of coaching. She has a lot of coaching and she feels competent. She is consciously competent. She's also conscious about the areas that can come up in which she has not yet developed or mastered skills. So she has a consciousness, she has consciousness around areas where something is incompetent or where she needs to refer. So she came to me last night with, with somebody who'd experienced a lot of death and post-traumatic stress disorder and she said, right, I know that I have, I, I could do something here, however, you know, let me hand over because you have much more um, unconscious competence uh, than I do. She was conscious of her incompetence in that area. So to know your boundaries also gives you confidence. When you know what the parameters are of your functioning, you can actually move forward uh, with much greater skill and ease. And when you're honest about those, it's sublime. So another trick is to have that sense of confidence, to, to step in and, and even own, hey look, this does feel unfamiliar. Notice I'm not saying scary, unfamiliar, this does feel unfamiliar. And then to move forward and let yourself uh, be honest about the areas in which you have or are conscious of your incompetence. Let those be for real areas in which you have evidence that there is still learning to be done. And one day, as you get in there and practice, you learn to drive, you jump in the car, and you just do what needs to be done. You're aware of the mirrors, you're aware of, you know, the, the side mirrors, off you go, traffic lights come, roundabouts come, um, and highways, motorways, or country lanes, and you are good to go even with the odd parallel park. You know, now I, there was a time when I really struggled with parallel parking, now I just zip on in without a thought uh, for not knowing what to do, because there is a real sense of conscious competence in that area, and even unconscious competence. So think about the areas in your life where you do have confidence. Are those areas where you are unconsciously competent? Where, for me, I can step into the kitchen, cook a meal with my eyes closed, or, or whatever it is that um, perhaps for you at a time long ago was a stretch, and now you're able to master without giving it a second thought. So here, if you take anything from this little chat, please let it be that you have a, 
a ride to go with jumping into the saddle and getting on with getting on in order to build unconscious competence in an area. When you reach that level of unconscious competence, life and that particular area in which you've developed a skill becomes an absolute or has a potential to become a joy and for you to develop artistry and then mastery or mastery first and then artistry. So I hope um, that you can take something cool from this 10 minute conversation on when you give it a go, when you give it a great crack then and you do the thing and become skillful at it, then you have a sense of confidence. When you can own the areas that you still have unconscious or conscious incompetence, then you feel great and congruent about stepping into your competence. So I know that as you go forward today, building that confidence by stepping up, identifying what's unfamiliar and knowing that simply you are in a cycle of becoming even more skilled, then I know that your confidence will move to another level and you will be creating an extraordinary difference, your difference. This is Nadine Love, wishing you well. Nadine Love, love who you are, love what you do and love creating your extraordinary difference today.